Good evening, Riverside County. I'm Bob Schoonover, president of SEIU Local 721. It's great to have so many of our Riverside County members on the call tonight. I want to stress this is going to be a detailed call. We're using every method to communicate with our members in Riverside County so they understand what's going on. The topic at hand couldn't be more urgent and the stakes couldn't be higher. At the bargaining table, we currently have a last best and final offer from Riverside County that is simply unacceptable. Let us be very clear. The county's current offer is a threat to public services you provide and asking you to settle for a pay cut. Yes, you heard that right. They want you to take a pay cut. I'm aware of many of you received an email this afternoon from Supervisor Cavalloni that attempts to say the contrary, but do not be fooled. The county's last, best, and final is asking you to settle for a pay cut. Later in this call, we will address the misinformation in the supervisor's email. Perhaps the supervisor himself has not read the actual last, best, and final proposal, and so it doesn't be come a he said, she said ordeal, SEIU will be publishing the actual copy of the county's last best and final offer where the language clearly states what is and isn't being proposed. Make no mistake about it, we have a copy of the last best and final from Riverside County and it is proposing that you pay for parking fees and in the end that will be a pay cut. The actual language says something about it, management's discretion, but there's no reason to ask for that unless you're going to charge you. Again, we will let you see that for yourself. Now let's proceed with the rest of the Teletown Hall. Tonight, you will have to decide if you are going to allow Riverside County to take money out of your paycheck. In some cases, this will mean losing over $4,000 a year in new parking fees and health care changes. On tonight's call, we will review the details of what this last best and final offer is from Riverside County. We will provide an update from the bargaining table, and finally, we will review our options moving forward. Now, let's begin by first congratulating all of you for taking part in the amazing two-day strike. The strike began at the beginning of September and was a powerful step in our fight against the unfair labor practices that have stalled our bargaining process with Riverside County and made it crystal clear that the county does not have any intention to value you as the workers or value the vital services you provide the community. I know you all made tremendous sacrifices to make your voices heard. I also know the county tried every step of the way to scare you and discourage you from participating. The county even used the courts to stop you from exercising your rights. But when the going gets tough, the tough women and men of SEIU 721 get going, and that's what you did. Make no mistake, the strike sent shockwaves throughout the county and even prompted the attention of the three leading gubernatorial candidates who all attended the strike. There's absolutely no doubt the county felt the impact of thousands of employees making their collective voices heard. But there is also no doubt that if we are going to stop the county in its anti-worker tracks, that we will have to prove tonight and in the coming weeks that we are ready to go all in and fight back in an even bigger way. For more than a year, county negotiations have been disrespecting and jerking around our frontline workers and our bargaining team. In my 30 plus years of working for union members, I've never seen an employer so determined to go after its own employees. Everyone on this call needs to understand that it only takes one unfair labor practice filing to have enough reason to go on strike, just one. But when we went on strike, we had 19 unfair practice charges filed against the county, and now there are 27. This is, this is downright union busting, and it is disgusting. The county has shown no intention of negotiating with us in good faith. They have switched negotiators four times. They have been 
unlawfully demanding we bargain over email, and at the table, they have rejected proposals without an explanation. They yanked a safety proposal without any reasoning, even as employees throughout the county are reported being physically attacked at work. Publicly, the county claims they simply don't have the funds. But when we raise the specific question at the bargaining table regarding county finances, they refuse to answer. They are refusing to be transparent with workers and taxpayers as well. They are being secretive about their expensive toxic swap deal with Wells Fargo. While they say there is no money, they have no problem shelling out millions of dollars for their consulting contracts with firms like KPMG. Plain and simple, the county does not want to bargain with its workers. Again, in their last offer, if their last offer moves forward, some of you on this call will be forced to pay over $4,000 a year in new parking fees and health care changes. We consistently ask for an analysis of how the county bargaining proposals will impact critical county services, and they ignored our requests. For example, the county claims we have enough social workers, enough mental health workers, enough nurses, enough DPSS workers, but our members, all of you, are reporting that you have very high caseloads, workloads, and that there is a need for more staff, and that you have more clients and patients than you can handle in a day. You are reporting stress levels at an all-time high due to extremely high caseloads that are impacting services that you are charged with providing. So naturally, we went to the bargaining table and requested the data. We requested an account of the caseloads, patient loads, along with an account of open and unfilled positions, but the county refused to provide this information. At the bargaining table, the county rejected our proposals for increased staffing in mental health, yet never provided information supporting that decision. When the county, what the county does not understand is that if we don't take concrete steps to ensure quality and efficiency and to lessen the stress loads of county workers, county workers will leave. Riverside County will see qualified and experienced workers leave for other counties or the private sector. And when skilled and committed workers leave, our communities suffer. Public servants must be valued, must be respected in order to retain them, period. We all know SEIU 721 members are not the only public sector workers that the county is going after. Layuna members and even sheriffs are facing this attack and disrespect. The fact that other union brothers and sisters are also facing a similar attack is not a coincidence. Let's be very clear, thousands of Riverside County workers are facing contracts that will essentially mean losing money from their paycheck for one reason and one reason only. County officials think they can get away with it. Riverside County wants to treat union workers as if they don't have the right to bargain their own contract. The, count, the contract fight is not just about one contract cycle. The contract fight is about Riverside coming after you and your ability to bargain. It is coming after the power of your united voices and it is coming after everything your union has allowed you to gain over the years. And if you let them get away with it this time, you can rest assured that next time it will, they will do the same thing, only worse. It could mean losing your health insurance altogether. Look no further than the average worker in America where employees simply do not offer any paid or subsidized health care. Look no further than the average worker without a union where pensions are not a thing. They're a thing of the past. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a reality that we're facing. Riverside County is willing to violate labor laws, go after workers, to compromise public services, because ultimately it wants to take away your right to collectively bargain. So let's be clear, we have only two choices. We can let them charge some of you over $4,000 a year in a new, in new health care and parking fees and let them get away with it. And that sets us up for even more takeaways in the next contract or 
we can fight back. I want to end by saying today you have a union. Today you have the right to fight back in one strong, united voice. Today you have the right to demand bargaining at the table. Today you have the right to demand that your work be valued. Use that right and make sure every single one of your coworkers is ready to exercise that right. There has never been a more urgent need to come together. Approximately 2,000 Riverside County members went on strike in September. But if we are determined to stop this attack on Riverside County workers, make no mistake about it, it is going to take those 2,000 workers plus another 2,000 workers to come together and really shake this place up. And we can do it. American workers have proven time and time again that when we come together, we are unstoppable. We just have to come together like never before. Now, I want to thank you, and I, I want you to hang on here. There's many more information coming about your contract. It's important you know this. So now I'm going to hand this over to Gilda Valdez, our Chief of Staff. Thank you, Bob. Uh, good evening, brothers and sisters. Um, I know this call is a little long, but we wanted to get you as much information as possible. As we move forward, we have decisions to make, and we want to make sure that all of you understand what's at stake and what's happening. Um, as Bob said, if, if we don't fight back, our only choice is just to sit there <clears throat> and let them take everything away from us. It is important to understand that this fight against our union workers isn't just happening in Riverside. On a national level, we have a major case right now in the Supreme Court ready to take away the rights of all union workers, just like it happened in Wisconsin. There's a case called, it's called the, uh, Janice versus AFSCME. Uh, the goal of Janice versus the AFSCME case is to deny workers the chance to even bargain for fair wages, for safe working conditions, or and benefits. This is why we can't afford to give in, not even an inch, in our contract fight in Riverside. Make no mistake about it, if you give an inch today, they will take everything tomorrow. Your health insurance, your pensions, and you will see wages rapidly fall lower and lower each year. We cannot forget that already in this bargaining cycle, the county is proposing that you begin to pay them for parking and pay them for health care. In some cases, workers will be forced to pay over $4,000 in new fees. So how do we fight back question? I mean, let's first quickly review our fight today. I think it's important that we do that because, you know, it seems like not everybody gets the information. Immediately after the strike ended, we asked the county to agree to mediation. Did everybody know that? Uh, with a third neutral party. And they denied, they denied that request. That's right. We asked for a mediation right uh, after the strike, and they denied the request. So in return, SEIU 7 to 1 began to increase pressure to the County Board of Supervisors, who are in the end the, in charge of what happens or doesn't happen in bargaining. To that end, hundreds of Riverside County workers have taken multiple actions against the supervisors at their offices, at work sites, and even in the supervisor neighborhoods. In the eight weeks since the strike, I'm happy to report that there have been over a dozen direct actions on the county supervisors. Uh, on the top of that, seven to one members have spoken at multiple city council meetings, including Indio, Hammett, Palm Springs, Temecula, and the city of Riverside. The phones, <clears throat> the phones at Riverside County Board of Supervisors have not stopped ringing. We have tracked ourselves over 1,445 calls into the offices of the County Board of Supervisors. This does, not, this, is not, this does not count all the ones that hung up on us or that we had to leave messages. And we will continue to make more calls. We are also handing them in the mail. We have sent over 88,000 pieces of mail to Riverside Homes in Ashley's, Tavalonis, and Washington's districts all sounding the alarm and demanding fairness and transparency from our elected leaders. And of course, we are also showing up everywhere the supervisors go. SEIU 7 to 1 members have crashed the campaign fundraisers of Chuck Washington, Marion Ashley, and Manuel Perez. We have canvassed their neighborhoods. Their neighbors are now well aware of the county's revenue waste and their mockery of labor laws. 
And just last night, we held a Halloween Monsters Mash right outside of Chuck Washington's home. This was after placing three full-page ads in the press enterprise, promoting the supervisor's need to stand up for workers and taxpayers. Again, we are leaving no stone unturned. I was not surprised to see Supervisor Tavaloni's email this afternoon at all. We are putting major pressure on him and the other supervisors, and we do not intend to stop. We have been at this for over a year. We have 27 unfair labor practice charges filed against the county. Each of those charges is proof that they do not respect the work of our members, and they are not willing to bargain with you in good faith. And that is simply unacceptable. But even as hard as we are currently fighting back, we now need to fight back even harder. The county needs to understand that we are not going to just watch them ignore our work, place safety concerns, ignore the needs of the public, or watch them take money away from your current paycheck. We are also fighting back in the court of law. At the time of the strike, we had 19 unfair labor practices against Riverside County. Today, we now have 27 filed. Among these new charges filed is the one that we filed against the county for threatening Riverside uh, University health system workers with termination and even prosecution for carrying pepper spray. In February of 2016, the county supervisors lifted the ban on pepper spray and mace so that our, that our members were not breaking any rules. Plus, it is unconscionable that the county would go after workers trying to protect themselves when it refuses to bargain for safer working conditions. After their threats, we immediately filed a charge against the county and held a press conference calling them out on their hypocrisy. To date, no worker has been disciplined or terminated despite the county's threats. Again, we have proven that when we come together and fight back, they cannot get away with it. For a full list of charges against the county, visit our SEIU website. They will be up tomorrow afternoon. On top of all that we are doing on the legal and political front, we're also amassing a diverse coalition of faith-based leaders and community organizations to stand with us and fight. Not a surprise that the county's refusal to be transparent about service levels and funding is also impacting residents and taxpayers. So every day we are finding new allies in the fight. Just two weeks ago, clergy leaders led a delegation to the Board of Supervisors to speak out against their anti and anti-worker bargaining. In the coming weeks, SEIU 7 to 1 members will be making appearances in the pulpit and various churches and congregations across the county, making a direct appeal to parishioners. Again, we are leaving no stone unturned in this fight. Lastly, we have officially filed a motion for sanctions in state court, charging the county and their Zappia law firm for misleading the court to shut down our ability, on, uh, our ability to go on strike. As some of you may remember, when we gave notice of your intent to go on strike in late August, the county went to the courts to seek an injunction. Their goal was to stop you from striking all together. And they were partially successful. They were able to deny almost 1,000 workers their rights to strike. We know now they deliberately misled the courts to silence the voices of workers. The county made the argument that certain workers shouldn't go on strike because the county didn't have enough time to do re the replacements. In other words, we believe the county purposely done that. So on November the 14th, we are taking the county to court. I can't stress enough on how low the county is willing to go, including misleading the court. That is why it's important that we keep our foot on the pedal and stay one step ahead of them. Our tenacity and energy must be mightier than the county's audacity to cheat and to violate labor laws. At the end of the call, we will talk about the major next steps. It is important that you keep the momentum of the last eight weeks because as you will hear in the next report from the bargaining table, without direct action in the streets, the county is bent on sticking us with a bad deal that will take money away from workers' paychecks. It will hurt your families and the communities we serve. So next, you will hear from our interim director and the chief negotiator, Aloy Alvarez. Hello, everyone. 
I know many of you are eager to get the details from the bargaining table, so I'll jump right in. I will also be addressing some of the misinformation in Supervisor Tavaloni's email sent to our members this afternoon. Personally, I'm glad the supervisor is finally engaging in what is happening at the bargaining table. It only took over 1,000 calls and 88,000 mailers, but looks like we got his attention. Now to the update. After over a year of negotiations, Riverside County Management submitted their last best and final offer to us on July 19th. In short, their offer is to take money away from your paychecks. First off, the county is proposing 0% raises. Again, perhaps Supervisor Tavaloni does not have access to the latest county proposal, but we do. And in plain English, anyone can read that there are no general raises across the board being offered. No COLA, raises across the board are at 0%. 0%. Nothing, nada, period. If the supervisor or any other county official has a different number to propose, by all means, bring it to the table. As a lead negotiator, I am more than ready to consider a number higher than 0%. I would like to note that in his email, the supervisor claims that all you all received increases of 38%. 38% raises. Are you kidding me? This is a line we have seen other county officials provide to the media to justify not giving you any raises this time around. The county uses this 38% number to make it sound like workers got rich in the last contract, but we know that this is not true. SEIU 721 members did not receive a 38% raise in the last contract. Not a single one of our members received a 38% raise, not one. If the supervisor is referring to the step increases already scheduled to be implemented, then it must be clarified to him and anyone else that is confused that a step increase that has already in our contract is not a raise. It is not being proposed because again, it's already there as part of what workers get as part of their many years of service. The information in that email is there to confuse the issue and to de deny you a fair bargaining process. Read it yourself. Now back to what really is in this proposal. The county is also proposing to charge you more for things and benefits you already have. For example, the county is proposing that you pay more money for your health coverage and your family's health care coverage. In their last best and final offer, the county is proposing no increase to our flex benefit contribution or health care subsidies, despite skyrocketing health insurance costs. This means that when cost of health insurance goes up in January of 2018, some of you on this call today who have your family on the insurance plan will be asked to pay up to $356 more each month on top of what you already pay for the health insurance. We are talking about $4,282 dollars that Riverside County wants to take away from your annual salary. That, sisters and brothers, is outrageous. Another example on how Riverside plans to take money that you currently have, Riverside County wants you to pay to park your car at work. Again, I'll give the supervisor the benefit of the doubt that perhaps he has not read the actual proposal from the county, but we have. And we will be publishing a copy of the section where it states in plain English that the county is proposing to charge you for parking at work. Please look for that language in our website by tomorrow afternoon. The county is proposing to charge you for parking. Yes, even if your parking structure is unsafe, even if some of you have already had your car vandalized while parked at work, they want you to pay up to $55 each month. According to their offer, which again, we will publish by tomorrow so you can read it yourself, the amount you will be charged for parking at work will be at the county's discretion. So again, Riverside County wants you to pay them to park your car while you work for them. And yes, of course, this is without any raises. Finally, as part of their plan to take away from what we already have, Riverside County has proposed to reduce your current step increases. This is a permanent redu reduction. They have proposed to reduce step increases from 5.42% to 2.71%. You heard that right. They want to reduce your current step increases. So for those of you who were counting on those step increases to keep up with your mortgage payments, to keep up with the rise in cost of living, to supplement the cost of a newborn baby, the county is proposing to take that away from you and your family. And this is not all. 
There are several other takeaways in their last best and final offer, including takeaways that affect specific classifications. For a full list of these, please visit our Riverside County Riverside Contract Bargaining Update section in our SEIU721.org website, which will go live tomorrow afternoon. I hope everyone on the call can see that accepting their so-called last, best, and final offer is not a choice we can live with. Working families cannot be asked to accept what essentially turns out to be a pay cut. This is ridiculous. Not when the county has refused to open up the books and prove that the money is not really there. Not when the county has refused to explore other cost-saving options. Not when the county is shelling out millions of dollars to outside consultants. In this email this afternoon, Supervisor Tavoloni writes about the need to prepare for an economic downturn. Well, perhaps the Board of Supervisors can start preparing for an economic downturn by not throwing millions of dollars to outside consultants and anti-union law firms. How about that? Look, we can't get distracted by misinformation. It is very simple. If we had a fair, even remotely decent contract to consider, we would not be here today. But we are here because the last best and final offer is simply the worst we have ever seen. And the county is refusing to bargain with you in good faith. As you heard from Gilda, the county refused our offer to have a neutral third party mediator help settle our differences. At the bargaining table, we are currently in a process called fact finding. Through the fact-finding process, a three-person panel composed of a union representative, an employer representative, and a third-party neutral appointee will determine the specifics of any deal reached between workers and the county. The fact-finding process does not guarantee that all the pending questions and charges against the county will be resolved, including the county's lack of transparency. Only after fact-finding has been completed can the county attempt to impose their last, best, and final offer. As we recently read in the news, the county already imposed on the Riverside Sheriff's Association. That means the county is forcing whatever terms they want on the sheriffs, whether the sheriffs agree with it or not. That can also happen to us, unless we change the course. As early as this November, Riverside County can impose and force workers to pay for parking, to pay more for insurance, to settle for 0% raises, and to continue working in unsafe working places. That is a harsh reality we are up against. And so before I turn this back to Gilda, I ask you to look deep inside of yourselves and ask yourself, are you going to let them get away with it? Thank you, Aloy. So how do we get to the finish line? Those details Aloy just reviewed are the key. What the county is proposing is simply unacceptable because at the end of the day, the county is proposing that our members settle for a pay cut with some of you being forced to pay over $4,000 a year in new parking fees and health care fees. Let's be clear, for some families, it will mean giving up their health insurance because they will not be able to afford it. But those who can continue aff affording health care insurance this time around may not be so lucky next time around when the county decides to charge even more. Again, if we allow the county to get away with it in this contract, you can be sure they will take even more next time around. I want to be clear, the county's proposal is not just about one contract cycle. This is about the county trying to take away your right to collectively bargain, period. This will not be resolved in a day. It will take time, and like anything that is worth a fight, it will take commitment and sacrifice. Hard work when we fight back is up to those of you on the call tonight. Already, fellow Riverside County workers, including bargaining team leaders, including worksite leaders, and even some of you on this call tonight have been meeting to discuss next steps. A plan for the next set of actions that will raise the stakes for the county is already underway. Let me repeat, as Bob said, we will need approximately 2,000 members who went on strike in September along with at least 2,000 more to stand up and unite in order to turn the heat on this county. Again, this fight is more than just about the current horrible deal that we have in front of us. The question here is, are you willing to let the county 
set you up to lose everything that you have gained over the years? Are you willing to lose your right to collectively bargain? Your bargaining team has made it clear that they are not okay with settling for a pay cut. Your field action team has also made it clear that settling for a deal that charges workers for parking and raises the cost of health care coverage is simply not an option. The leadership of your union is not okay with the attack on workers from Riverside County, nor do we believe that anyone should settle for this horrible last best and final offer. But ultimately, the choice is yours. We want to hear from you. Your voice matters because at the end of the day, if you are not okay with this deal, then there has to be a strong, unbreakable commitment to fight back and to make sure that thousands of your fellow Riverside County workers are also willing to fight back. At this moment, we would like to hear from you. If you are willing to settle for Riverside County's current offer, which includes zero raises, okay, press one. If you are okay with county taking away your current step raises, charging you new fees for parking, and charging you even more for your health care coverage, where some of you will be facing an additional cost of over $4,000 just to keep your family covered, then press one. Once again, Press one if you're okay with settling for a deal that will take money away from your paycheck, a deal that will not address safety issues in the workplace or caseloads and will ultimately lower the bar for jobs in Riverside County. Go ahead, press one now. If you are not willing to settle for the county's current offer, press two now. Press two now if you're ready to fight back because you value your work and you know it's important to protect what you have fought for. Press two if you believe that it's unconscionable for Riverside to make health care unaffordable for working families. Once again, press two now if you reject this county's horrible last, best, and final offer and are willing to fight back. Press two now. I'll give you a minute. I'll give you like a few seconds. Okay. We will look at the results of this informal poll, and we will be reaching out to you to follow up. Whether or not you are willing to settle for this offer from Riverside County is a question that every Riverside County member represented by SEIU 7 to 1 should have an opportunity to think this through and answer. And so I'm going to announce the next crucial step in our campaign. As our lead negotiator laid out, this last best and final offer from the county should be imposed on us as early as next month. And so rather than just wait to see if the county is going to force this offer upon us, SEIU 7 to 1 bargaining team would like to give every member an opportunity to vote on this last best and final offer. A Riverside County wide vote will be launched in November so that every member can have an opportunity to decide if they are willing to settle for a pay cut or if they are ready to roll up their sleeves and do whatever it takes to fight back. Let's be very clear. Those are the only two options. There is no in-between. Riverside County officials have made it clear that they are not willing to bargain in good faith. The, cho the choice will be yours. Your bargaining team and elected member leaders will be announcing details of a countywide vote in order to ensure participation far and wide. And we will place newspaper ads promoting the vote. We will also be looking into scheduling voting at your work sites, at 7 to 1 Riverside office, and other locations so that every member can cast a vote. If we are going to have a fight, and if we are going to win, it's going to take an unprecedented number of Riverside County members to come together, stand up, and make their voices heard. The choice will be yours. Thank you, everyone, for participating in tonight's call. And remember, when we fight, we win. Good night, everybody. Thank you.